Hello everyone. Welcome for attending today's webinar. Our topic today will be focused on intracranial pressure waveform. The Camino ICP monitor is an advanced touchscreen monitoring system that displays real-time data and captures trend data over a five-day period. In addition, Camino allows clinicians to visualize ICP pulse wave and analyze them. Let's discuss what kind of information we could get from the waveform. The webinar is representing on behalf of Neuro Training Academy. Our mission statement is to create, present, and disseminate clinical knowledge and product expertise to educate our customer to empower them to further improve and advance patient care and clinician workflow. And here is the website of NTA. Kindly check in the app's website for others coming webinar. Also, there are already some webinars uploaded in YouTube for revision. They are very interesting and worth to attend. I'm representing the clinical application specialist team. We are committed to support our customer by providing the expert consultancy of dedicated clinical application specialist for every modality for every solution we developed. Our team of experts include people from different backgrounds. We have skilled professionals with years of field experience in a wide range of new diagnostic, new surgery, or new critical care modality. And I'm David, today's speaker. I'm a registered nurse from Hong Kong, specialized in critical care nursing. I take care of patients with new surgical problems such as brain injury, intracranial hemorrhage. I complete my bachelor's degree in nursing in the Chinese University of Hong Kong and also hold a postgraduation certificate in intensive care nursing. I will go through today's training material to you soon. If you have any question, kindly type it in the comment bar. There will be a question and answer session in the end. Let's discuss them later. And today's learning objectives, I will go through cerebral autoregulation to you first, and then I will, I will show how to identify ICP pulse wave for you and discuss ICP pulse waveforms any clinical implications such as. So let's begin our to today webinar. The first part I would like to go through with you is the ba basic powerful physiology in ICP. First of all, we need to know in we need to know an adult scout is a rigid and secure vault. And the scout can easily accommodate an additional volume. The principle of ICP monitoring is is ICP reflect the dynamic relationship the relationship between the intracranial content, blood, brain, cerebral spinal fluid, and the puzzle physiology that may a sort of compensatory mechanism. For the compensatory mechanism, it helps the brain to maintain a stable ICP environment, regulating the blood flow in different conditions. Autoregulation is the capacity of the cerebral circulation to alert vascular resistance in order to maintain a relative constant cerebral blood flow CBF, over a range of mean arterial pressure. For example, you can see in the right side of your screen, the red circle is the size of the artery that's supplying the blood flow to our brain. When mean arterial pressure increases, vascular constriction occurred, increasing cerebral vascular resistance and maintaining a cerebral blood flow. So, the blood supplying the brain will not be too high, even our blood pressure is 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 at at a high high ranges, maybe 100 to 150. Vasal constrictions occurred to help our brain to maintain a steady cerebral blood flow. In the contrast, when mean arterial pressure decreases, vasal dilation occurred and cerebrovascular resistance decreased again. 
and a constant cerebral blood flow is also maintained. Autoregulation helps to maintain a constant cerebral blood flow in different blood pressure, and it can be represented by equation. CBF is equal to cerebral perfusion pressure divided by cerebral vascular resistance, and um, FA CBF is equal to 15 mL per 100 gram per minute in adult. Another concept I would like to go through with you is monocalic hypothesis. It provides a framework, framework for managing and treating conditions that cause erratic intracranial pressure. This hypothesis states that the skull is a fixed compartment, and the sum of the volume of intracranial blood, brain, and cerebral spinal fluid is constant. And any Increase in one of these must be offset by an equal decrease in another, or else pressure increase. When an injury occurs causing an additional mass, for example a blood inside our skull, the brain compensates by shunting the CSF and the blood out of the skull, and mild increase in ICP may be seen, just like the middle figure in below. When the mass is further increased, from the you can see from the right side the right the right figures when the mass further increase this compensatory system will which is point of exhaustion and the patient is at high risk of intracranial hypertension and here is representing a volume pressure relationship the compensatory mechanism referred to and the monocalcule hypothesis to maintain a constant total intracranial volume. They have, they have the display of venous blood through the jugular and scalp veins, displacement of intracranial CSF through the foramen magnum into the spinal subacranial space, and decreased production of CSF. The cerebral vas vasodilation increases cerebral blood volume. Cerebral vas vasoconstriction decreases the blood the cerebral blood volume. So understanding the cerebral autoregulation and manipulation and manipulation of these factors could allow physicians to treat ICP in high cases. As I said in the molecular hypothesis, when the compensation mechanism are exalted with the maximum displacement of CSF and venous blood, brain tissue and arterial blood supplies are then displaced Evaluate ICP could lead to intracranial hypertension, cerebral hypoperfusion, ischemia, brain herniation, and finally death. As you can see, the right side, the graph in the right side of your screen, after the the additional mass exceeds a point of exertion and the volume compensation mechanism, which exertions, the intracranial pressure will increase rapidly. And here's the relationship. So understanding the ICP waveform could allow the clinician to do a lot of stuff. We can learn a lot of information inside an injured brain. Just look at the ICP waveform displayed in the caminal monitor. The waveform could first provide information about intracranial dynamics and then provide information about brain compliance. Through the monitoring of ICP waveform, we could identify patients with decreased adaptive capacity and early identify patients at risk for decrease in CPP. First, I will go through a normal, how a normal ICP waveform should be like. Knowledge of the mechanism of the ICP waveform can contribute to understand the clinical application of ICP waveform analysis. The shape of ICP waveform is determined by the complex interactions of the arterial input, intracranial contents, and venous outflow. In general, under normal phys physiological condition, the origin of ICP waveform is thought to be pulmonary, pulmonary arterial from the artery with which agree venous pulsation contributing to later components. 
So, for a normal ICP waveform, we can easily visualize there is three peaks. They are labeling P1, P2, and P3. P1, we normally call, uh, named it percussion wave. It is the first and the sharpest peak. It is from artery, arterial origin with transmission from the inter intracerebral vessels or from the coronal plexus to the brain quarantine and CSF. It reflects the arterial pressure. For P2, we normally name it is tidal wave. It's more variable and ends on the denotic dynotic notch. Under normal condition, pulmonary arterial layer, it is also pulp arterial in origin. Reflect, it reflects P2 reflects brain tissue compliance. For P3, we call it decotic wave. It follows the decotic notch. It's venous in origin and reflects the culture of the aortic valve. So, for a normal ICP waveform, P1, P2, P3 should be should be should be can, should be easily wielded, and P1 is the sharpest and the highest, and P2 and P3 they are less in amplitude. Then for a non abnormal ICP waveform, changes in ICP waveform amplitude and configuration can be attributed to both changes in intracranial compliance and change in cerebral buffer regulatory mechanism. And P2 evaluation reflects decreased intracranial adaptive capacity and impaired autoregulation. First of all, please look at the two graphs below the, the, the screen of your, uh, below at, at the bottom of your screen. You can see for the abnormal IC waveform, P2 become the highest peak among P1 and P3. And P2 evaluations also has been examined in terms of its ability to predict decreased adaptive capacity and risk for sustained increase in ICP. If we see P2 evaluation, we know that the patient may be at risk for sustained increase in ICP. P2 evaluation is associated with sustained increase in ICP in response to stimulus, but sustained in ICP can occur without P2 evaluation. Visual assessment of the ICP waveform for increased amplitude or P2 evaluation has been studied and suggests a rough indicator of decreased intracranial adaptive capacity and abnormal intracranial dynamics. It's one of the abnormal ICP waveform, and here's another one with disappearing of P1. P1 is P1 and P2 are together now. In case where a rapidly expanding mass is present, the amplitude of ICP waveform increase P1, P2, P3 will be all increased in the initial day, but individual piece remain so individual piece remain visible at that stage. But when the ICP continues to increase, P2 increase to a greater extent than P1, the peak will disappear and peak P1 may become bur buried. And then for another type of ICP waveform is flattened or damned. With diminished visibility of the three, three peaks, we, we cannot see all the waveform components. We have to assure, first of all, we have to assure, assure scale is optimized on the monitor. But even the the scale is optimized in the monitor. We cannot see any ICP waveform. Then we we may we may consider other factors. Flatten or damp the ICP waveform can maybe or may occur after craniectomy or pneumocephalus. Pressure value displayed on the ICP monitor may not be that accurate. Research has been done to investigate the ICP waveform changes under different conditions. The magnitude of the ICP waveform is affected by both by the stage of intracranial components. For example, 
showed in the table. This is from a research paper. If there is a rapidly expanding mass lesion, the amplitude of the waveform will increase. Withdrawal of CSF and head elevation result in a decrease in the mean ICP and ICP waveform amplitude, but a little change in the waveform configuration. So we, so we need to focus on the ICP waveform. What is the reason behind the waveform? For example, uh, you can see increase the ICP from increase the CSF volume will result in an increase in the ICP waveform amplitude, but with a little changes in the configuration. The extreme change in blood pressure, hypertension, or hypotension will also cause change in ICP waveform, particularly P1, which is arterial origin. Under the condition of arterial hypertension, there is a decrease in mean ICP and ICP waveform amplitude, especially also especially P1. And for hypertension condition, both, both mean ICP and ICP waveform will increase. Physiological conditions that result in cerebral cerebral constriction or vasodilation also result in the change in the ICP waveform. Cerebral, vaso, cerebral vasodilation will occur under severe hypercapnia or hypoxia. This will cause increase in ICP waveform amplitude and rounding of the waveform. These changes may be result from the decreased in cerebral vascular resistance and the cerebral arterial vasodilation lead to increased transfer of arterial pulse to the ICP waveform. Hyperventilation decreases mean ICP and the amplitude of P2 to a lesser extent P3, with P1 remaining relative unchanged. In Camino monitor, ICP monitor, we can have immediate viewing of ICP waveform. From the five options above the monitor, simply press the main button. You could get the immediate ICP waveform from the patient, just like this on the screen. This is the view you could get from the main bottom. You can see in a normal ICP waveform, in a no, in, you can see P1, P2, and P3 in the screen. Also, please make sure the scale is in optimal. Natus provide a quick reference card to easily identify ICP waveform is is for the customer for the convenience of the customer users. At the right hand side of the screen, you can see this is the ref quick reference card for the customer to view. With this face, a normal how a normal ICP waveform should be like, and the, and showing if there is P two is larger than T one, that may indicate of poor compliance for the quick reference for the conditions. And here's the references. And thank you very much, everyone. And this is the end of the webinar. And. The following will be the question and answer section. Kindly type your question to the comment bar to me and I will go through it one by one. Thank you very much. Thank you again.